Hey guys, we just recorded a two-part series on a mini-series called The Two Shall Become One. Uh, join us as we uh, spend a little bit of time with Pastor David on the topic of marriage on The Two Shall Become One. I hope you guys enjoy part one. Welcome everybody to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor, welcome and God bless you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Today, Pastor, I have a question uh, that's based more from a, a marital perspective, based on marriage. And you know, some of these, some of the conversations that we've had off camera have centered around this. And and uh, and I found it interesting in in terms of the role that the wife plays. You know, in Matthew chapter nineteen, verse five, it talks about the two shall become one flesh. And throughout the entire Bible, or in, through the instructions of Jesus, it and in Paul. He, he talks about, a lot of times, the role of the husband, the priest of the home, the washing our wives in the, with the water of the word, and, and is in, gives instructions to us husbands in our role. But when we look at the role of the wife and, and uh, the role that the wife plays in our marriages, what are the, some of the significant aspects that uh, the, role, the, wife, the role of the wife plays in our lives. You know, I have a real problem with um, with uh, directing women in what their role is. To be honest with you, I, I think that, um, that that there are certain things the Scripture says seems to say fairly clearly in terms of the respect and and uh, the the submission, things of that nature. But because people have misunderstood how that actually works, that's simply a, a detail of of what actually takes place in. In, in a good marriage is uh, the respect and submission and the husband loving the wife. and Those are all things that really are, are combined into what a marriage actually is. And so um, I, I believe that, and I can only, I can speak biblically obviously about this, but I also want to speak practically in terms of how it's been uh, worked out in my own life. I can tell you this, I can say that, that as a man, I have a, a tendency of, uh, of in my relationship with my wife, I have a tendency of because I want to love her even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Uh, I, I want to have that sacrificial kind of love for my wife. But what happens in actual marriage is when it's, when it's following the plans of the Lord, um, there is a, there is a uh, working together as a unit. And, and I am actually playing off of some of the things that are my wife's personality and, and her traits as she plays off mine. That's why I have a, a difficulty with, with people saying, oh, you know, all men are this way, all women are that way. I, 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 I see us as having a combination of traits and some things are, are referred to, oh, that's what women do um, when a man can do the same kind of thing and all. And so I think that we get kind of odd when we uh, try to uh, explain things in a concrete black and white kind of way, John. I, I'll tell you this. You know, I, I, I am blessed to be able to say I, I never really had um, a lot of girlfriends. I, I, I just have, I just, maybe they just didn't want to be <laughs> my girlfriend. I don't know. I just, I just never had a lot. I only had a couple of girls and that I cared about in uh, before I met my wife, and so. I do know this. I do know that I would not be the man I am today if it were not for my wife. I know that because I play off of her. Mm -hmm. And my wife has attributes, characteristics that, that have helped to shape me and mold me because I respond to her needs. I initiate, she responds, but I also respond as she initiates. And so in our relationship, because I have a, uh, I have probably one of the best women in the world, and I, don't, I, I really mean that. And anybody who knows my Marie knows that that she's just an amazing woman, and and her kindness and her love and her grace to me and her her trust in me and her her respect, all of those things that that, that I think a, a godly woman ought to have. My, my wife has that for me, John. You know her, mm -hmm. and it, and that's true. You watch us interact, and it's just true. I'm what I'm saying is absolutely true and so she, her goodness and her the way she has always responded to me even as a young believer both of us being young believers when we we got when we met and eventually married 
Um, I have been shaped by, by that woman. The two really did become one. You know, the, the edges of my life and the edges of her life interlocked. And, and it made me and it made her uh, into a person that, that, into the person that we are today, John. So my wife has kindness and my wife has a sweetness. My wife has a self-control when she keeps her mouth you know, the words to herself, and sometimes she may want to speak out because she thinks it through. All of those things have benefited me as a man, all of them. Her trust in me, her respect of me, her love for me. Uh, her, her, she has babies. We have babies together and grandbabies. Her love and affection for her family, all of those things have been uh, the things in my life that that have made me into the man I am today. Had I married the other two girls, there were only two, if I had married either one of those two, either of those two, I wouldn't be David Rosales today. I wouldn't be who people know me to be today because each one of them had a different personality and a different way of seeing life and a different way of being that I would have basically adjusted and adapted to, which would have made me somebody different now. So I, 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 I believe that in a Christian marriage, you know, when a husband loves his wife, when he washes her with the water of the word when he, he, uh, he, he sacrificially lays his life down for her, uh, when he does the things that a husband does, you know, um, if she's a responder to those things, that she's going to grow too. And so together, as you're growing in Christ, you're growing closer together in Christ. And, and that's why it's important to pray together or to, to attend services together, to read the word, those kinds of things. That's why those things are so important because you're uniting. Uh, and uh, basically at an early portion of our marriage, uh, in, our, in our ministry, and, and we, we, we started ministry um, together when we were married just a few years. And so uh, at first uh, I, I would be given opportunity to, to travel to different countries. And I, I remember going to China. I remember going to India. I remember going off to Manila, Philippines. And, and now I'm ministering in third world countries and, and, and all, and I'm coming back different. I'm coming back changed by what I've gone through. And I've left my girl at home caring for our children and holding down the fort. And I finally said to Marie, honey, you need to go with me. Because the things that I'm experiencing, I don't want to experience alone because it's changing me as a person. And you won't be able to see why these changes are taking place. And, and so we made, uh, we made some changes. I didn't go as often as I could have. But when I did go, I would take her with me wherever it might be that she could go. We didn't leave our children. We didn't abandon them. We, we felt it was necessary, obviously, to be there for our kids. But as we grew older in ministry, John, we, we would go different places together. I've taken her to various places. She's been with me to Japan. She's been with me um, to, to, to Mexico. She's been with me in South America. She's, she's been with me to Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico. Um, and in, in nationally here uh, in the state, she's gone with me to Austria, to, to England, to Scotland on various ministry trips. We've gone to Israel 28 times together. Um, and, and as a result of that, we have united in a deeper way in ministry. So I really believe that through our ministry and service of God and then serving one another and serving with one another, John, that I have been changed in that way. So. With other people, you know, average person who's not a minister, I would simply say that they need to. They need to have devotions together. They need to attend church together. They need to, to do the spiritual things that, uh, that can unite their hearts mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and to learn each other. You know, I, I, I believe that, that my, one, of the, one of the things I want to learn is I want to learn the ways of my wife. I, I want to know what pleases her. I want to know what doesn't please her. I, I, I don't want to hurt her, so I want to know how I can be of help to her. I want to be a support to her. I, I, I want us to, to grow older together. We're already old. We're growing older together. <laughs> and I pray, and I, I pray that God grants us many years more to, to enjoy each other and, and to, to do those things that, that, um, that God has called me to do but I don't do those things alone. And so when we talk about marriage and all, 
Husbands, love your wife as, as Christ loved the church. And, and I'll close with just a, a thought. The, the Bible doesn't, doesn't command the woman to love her husband. The, the Bible commands uh, the older women to teach the younger women how to love their husbands. Eve was created for Adam, but Adam was created without Eve. Mm. She was inherent in him in his rib, but she was taken out of the man. And so Adam, Adam had a role already. He, he was a, care, a caretaker of the garden. He had relationship with God already. Those things were established. The Bible doesn't tell us how long, but that was the first. And, and, and Paul says it. He says the man was created first and then the woman. The man was not created for the woman, but the woman for the man. And so, you know, I can, I can be caught up with things that are pertaining to the things of the Lord, but my wife and I need to together join to do those things so we have a more complete kind of work. And so I think it's very important for the husband to, to, to be aware of those things. The husband loves the wife because the husband, husband can be caught up with other right. things. Right. The wife was created for the man. So my wife has a natural love for me, her husband. It's not that I don't have a natural love for her. It was that I needed to learn what a priority in, in life is with this woman because I can be sidetracked mm -hmm. by what God called me to do in this, right? And, and men can be sidetracked by their jobs and their hobbies and, and everything else and then lose the, uh, the reason why they hooked up right. and got married with this woman in the first place. And so uh, I, really, I really believe in taking care of uh, your home because if you take care of your wife and your children in your home, you can, you can take care of the house of God. Amen.